Okay, today I'm going to discuss uh, instruments, uh, ESR and PCB tube. So this is the ESR tube, estrogen's tube. This is uh, 30 centimeters in length and it has a internal diameter of 2.5 mm and both ends of the tube are open and the the lower 20 centimeters it has calibrations from 1 to 200 so for every 1 mm there is a calibration so it's a 30 centimeters glass tube with both ends open and it has an internal diameter of 2.5 mm with calibrations from 0 to 200 range this is used for the measurement of esr erythrocyte sedimentation rate and this is the vestige stand where we keep the Vestigis tube and uh, uh, it has to be kept in mind that uh, this tube has to be placed vertically if we keep uh, it's if it's not vertical the uh, there may be a change in the ESR widely so it has to be kept uh, vertically without any slanting position and uh, in a, um, a normal temperature has to be maintained that is normal room temperature like 28 to 30 degrees it has to be maintained in uh, when you keep the ESR these are the prerequisites in a lab it has to be kept vertically and the temperature has to be maintained there should be no slanting or uh, no uh, linear uh, no uh, there should not be any slanting position of the tube then there may be a wide variation in the ESR we may get the fault results and what is the anticoagulant used? It's the 3.8% trisodium citrate in the ratio of 1 is to 4. That is one part of uh, anticoagulant to four parts of blood. This is the anticoagulant used. And this con anticoagulant, it's not only used in the ESR measurement, ESR estimation. It's also used in for coagulation studies. When this 3.8% trisodium citrate is used for coagulation studies, we don't take it uh, in this uh, ratio, we take it in the ratio of 1 is to 9. So for uh, anti for coagulation studies, 3.8% uh, trisodium citrate is used in the ratio of 1 is to 9. That is 1 part of anticoagulant to 9 parts of blood. Whereas for the ESR estimation, the same anticoagulant is used but in a different ratio that is 1 is to 4. So what is erythrocyte sedimentation rate? Erythrocyte is red cell rbc sedimentation is settling rate is the um, for a given r uh, how much amount of rbc are settling down this this is what the erythrocyte sedimentation rate, uh, rate denotes the rate at which the red cells settle for a given period of one hour this is the erythrocyte sedimentation rate what is the principle behind it when an anticoagulated blood uh, that is the anticoagulant used is 3.8 percent sodium citrated blood is used, is allowed to stand vertically the red cells will settle towards the bottom of the tube till they form a packed column in a given interval of time here the given interval of time usually we take is uh, one hour and uh, the uh, the rbc settle down to the bottom and we measure the uh, gap uh, uh, and this is called the esr so this is what this is the ESR tube, uh, after one hour what happens is the RBC settle down to the bottom and the distance is measured in terms of mm per hour and this is the erythrocyte sedimentation rate. The settling of the RBC after a period of one hour is called the erythrocyte sedimentation rate and this is measured in mm per hour because we have the measurements here mm uh, 1 to 200 are the measurements given and here you have to see mm per hour is the a unit which which we use for erythrocyte sedimentation rate. What are the way, way phases in ESR? The erythrocyte sedimentation rate for a period of one hour we are checking. So it occurs in three phases. And the three phases are named as phase of Rolle formation, phase of settling and phase of packing. First phase is phase of Rolle formation. Here it takes about 10 minutes of time. Here what happens is the RBC they form Rolle. Role is stack like uh, coins, stack like coins. That is the coins uh, when we keep uh, one rupee or two rupee coins, how they come an approximation with each other, that's called the role. So the stack like coins, same uh, are seen in the RBC also. This is called the role formation. This takes about uh, 10 minutes of time and this is a slow sedimentation rate. Next one is the phase of settling. 
this takes to about 40 minutes here uh, they the rbc settle down at a constant rate uh, they take a pace they take a uh, faster pace and they settle down to the bottom and last is the phase of packing when all the rbc which get aggregated they come very close to each other and come to come to settle down to the bottom and this is the last 10 minute of phase so you have to remember the phase of roll up formation phase of settling and phase of packing there are these are the three phases in which the esr erythrocytes uh, settling down occurs first is the phase of roll up formation where the rbc form into small group of role and uh, next is the these which uh, the role which are formed get settled to the bottom and phase of packing is the last uh, final packing last final settling down of the rbc to the bottom of the tube this takes about 10 minutes and what is the mechanism usually uh, esr uh, there are some promoting factors which uh, promote the settling of rbc where uh, there are some uh, negative factors which do not promote the rbc settling so normally uh, what are the forces what are the negative factors which cause the role formation which cause the settling of the rbc normally what happens is there should be role formation to uh, role formation is the most important step for the erythrocytes to settle down to the bottom but usually there is there any role formation in normal rbc normal rbc uh, they have a charge they carry a negative charge each rbc carries a negative charge when they carry a negative charge as you know all like charges they ripple so whenever the uh, two rbc come in contact with each other the rbc try to ripple each other because of the negative charge they carry so there is no role formation but what happens uh, but uh, in esr uh, when we keep the when we keep for esr there is some role formation what are the factors which are contributing to the role formation there are some proteins plasma proteins like fibrinogen albumin cholesterol all these they contribute to the role formation because they remove the negative charge from the rbc so the zeta potential of the rbc is decreased so the rbc come in contact with the each other when there is no charge the rbc come in contact with the each other and there is role formation so what is the mechanism initial firstly there are some promoting factors there are some uh, negative factors which contribute to the rbc normally normal rbc they cannot form role formation because of the charge they carry the because of the charge they carry they repel with each other and uh, there is a zeta potential which is established which cannot be nullified so the role formation is inhibited but due to the presence of plasma factors like plasma proteins fibrinogen albumin lecithin cholesterol etc the uh, zeta potential of the rbc is decreased because the charge on the rbc is removed so they come in contact the rbc come in contact with each other and this promotes the role formation so the role, role formation is the most important factor which is essential for the erythrocyte segmentation rate i hope you understand this mechanism because it's very important and other than this what are the other factors i have divided the factors of uh, factors which promote the uh, esr uh, which promote the esr increase into red cell factors and the plasma factors in the red cell factors one thing you have to remember is whenever there is an anemia there is increased there is decrease in the rbc count leading to increase in the esr because whenever there is a decrease in the rbc count what happens there is faster settling of the rbc the role formation is easy because it's not clumsy the tube it's not clumsy the rbc are very uh, slightly um, uh, they are uh, not so closely packed so they come in contact with each other and settle down easily so there is increase in the esr whereas whenever there is an increase in the red cell mass like in polycythemia there are, the rbc are very closely packed and because of which what happens is there is uh, the role formation is not promoted here and even they come in contact with each other even they they form a role formation there is no marked uh, in, uh, marked there is no marked settling of the rbc so there is a decrease in the esr and another thing is compared to the normal sites macrocytes settle down easily uh settle down the rbc of the, uh, the macrocytic rbc settle down easily to the bottom compared to the normal sites and microcytes 
So the number and size of the RBC plays a very important role in settling down of the RBC. If there is a decrease in the red cell count, as they are distinctly placed, the RBC are distinctly placed, they come in close contact with each other, they promote the role of formation and they settle down faster to the bottom. Whereas when there is an increase in the red cell mass, what happens is, uh, the uh, are uh, as they are closely packed, uh, they cannot come. I mean, uh, the role formation is not so much promoted, and there is the ASR is not so much elevated. And compared to the size, the macrocytic RBC they uh, sediment uh, faster compared to a normal site and microcyte. And plasma factors we have discussed the red cell factors now, coming to the plasma factors. Uh, there are certain proteins like fibrinogen, globulin, and cholesterol. This increase the ESR. As I said earlier, the plasma proteins, some of the plasma proteins, they remove the negative charge from the RBC. So the zeta potential of the RBC is decreased. So the RBC coming close, the rippling of the RBC is decreased, and the RBC coming in contact with each other, and RBC settle down to the bottom. This is what happens with the plasma factors like fibrinogen, globulin, and cholesterol. Whereas the plasma albumin, this is also one plasma protein, but this do not promote the sedimentation of RBC. And uh, lecithin is one uh, compound. This is also this is also one which uh, retards the ESR, decrease in the ESR. So fibrinogen, globulin, cholesterol increase the ESR, whereas the albumin and lecithin decrease the ESR. How they increase the DS ESR? Uh, because the zeta potential of the RBC is decreased by the decrease in the negative charge of the RBC. This is what happens. And coming to the normal reference range, males it is 0 to 5 mm per hour, females it is 0 to 10 mm per hour. Why there is, uh, why there is ESR is uh, slightly increased in females? Because females contain estrogen in the blood and estrogen is the one which, uh, which acts as a, means one of the protein which uh, uh, decreases the negative charge in the RBC and promotes the role formation. That's why there is uh, increase in the ESR. And another, more, another thing is fibrinogen is more in females compared to males. And females are usually, they have less RBC count compared to males. As they have less RBC count, as I said, whenever there is a less RBC count, it promotes the uh, role formation, it increases the ESR, it increases the ESR. These are the three reasons why females get a, uh, females have a high ESR. One is they have a estrogen. This is a protein responsible for promoting role formation. And second one is they have high fibrinogen, females compared to males. And third one is females have red cell count, less red cell count compared to males, due to which there is promotion of the role formation. And what are the conditions where ESR is increased? Infections, chronic inflammations, and multiple myeloma. Infections like uh, syphilis, tuber chronic infections like syphilis, tuberculosis, etc. They have a high ESR. In tuberculosis, ESR is raised up to 100. Whenever you get a ESR above 80 or 100, you should first suspect the most common thing that is tuberculosis. And chronic inflammatory conditions like tuberculosis, uh, sorry, rheumatoid arthritis, Sjogren's syndrome, polyarthritis nodosa, all these can lead to increase in the ESR. And multiple myeloma is the plasma cell dysplasia or plasma cell neoplasm where there is marked elevation of ESR to 100 because of the multiple myeloma is a condition where plasma cells get proliferated. So plasma cells are the one which synthesize the immunoglobulins. So globulins, in, uh, globulins are increased in multiple myeloma. And globulins are the one which are responsible for the uh, increased, uh, they, they remove the, all the zeta potential from the RBC and there is an increase in the RBC. These are the three conditions where ESR is increased. In chronic infections and chronic inflammations, why there is an ESR increase? In chronic infections, what happens is there are cytokines which are released. And these cytokines, they act on the RBC, they act in the same way as the plasma proteins act. They act, uh, they act on the RBC. They remove the negative charge from the RBC. They increase the, uh, they, uh, they decrease the zeta potential of the RBC. So the RBC come in close contact with each other and settle down to the bottom. This is how chronic inflammations, uh, chronic infections and chronic inflammations affect on the R, uh, ESR. ESR is decreased in polycythemia. As I said earlier, 
because of the closely packed rbc in the sr2 they cannot uh, come for they get on easily second down to the bottom so the esr is decreased and other than this abnormal shapes like sickle cell anemia and hereditary spherocytosis abnormal R these contain abnormal rbcs the shape of the rbc is altered so they cannot promote the role formation when there is no role formation there is no uh, increase in the esr so there are two anemias usually anemia is uh, anemia uh, in anemia csr is increased but there are two anemias where esr is decreased that is sickle cell anemia and hereditary spherocytosis this you have to remember uh, usually whenever you get a esr tube what are the questions asked is uh, first to describe the tube you have to say it's a long tube it's 30 cm in length with two uh, two sides of the tube open Uh, with calibration ranging from one to two hundred, this has to be placed in vegetable uh, stand it, and it has to be washed after one hour. Then we have to see the settling of the RBC and measure in mm per hour. After measuring, uh, you have to see whether it's falling in the normal range or abnormal range. If it's falling in normal range, what is the normal range? And if it's falling in the abnormal range, what can be the conditions? Uh, what can be the conditions? ESR is increased in uh, infections like chronic inflammation, chronic infections, chronic inflammations, and multiple myeloma. Whereas ESR is decreased in sickle cell anemia, polycythemia, and hereditary spherocytosis. And what are the factors influencing the ESR? Red cell factors and plasma factors. Red cell factors is whenever there is a decrease in the RBC count, there is increase in the ESR because the RBC settles down easily to the bottom. Whereas, whenever there is a decrease in the uh, increase in the RBC count, the RBC cannot easily uh, settle down to the bottom, so there is a decrease in the ESR. And uh, one more thing is plasma factors. Plasma factors like plasma proteins, uh, fibrinogen, albumin, globulins, cholesterol, all these remove the negative charge from the RBC, so the zeta potential of the RBC is decreased. And uh, the, uh, due to which there is promotion of the role formation and settling down of the RBC to the bottom. So this is how the plasma proteins act. But there are certain plasma proteins like albumin and lecithin. They do not promote the role formation, so they retard the ESR. This you have to remember. These are the few things which you you have to remember in ESR. Next is the Winthrop tube. This is a 11 centimeter long tube with one end closed and one end open. The internal bore diameter is 2.5 mm, and here the calibrations are ranging from 0 to 10. In Winthrop's tube, we can measure both. Uh, mostly, it's used for measurement of packet cell volume, that is the hematocrit. Other than this, it can also be used for ESR. How it can be used for ESR? In ESR, what uh, 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 we have to fill up to 10. Uh, 0 to 10 is the calibration. 0 is in the upper. I mean, uh, we have to. Uh, zero is in the um, zero is at the top. You have to measure, uh, fill the windrow uh, tube with pasteur's pipet up to zero, and you have to put it in the stand vertically and uh, uh, note the readings after one hour. Just you have to keep the tube in the tube stand, and you have to <coughs> note the reading after one hour. After uh, one hour, what is the what are the calibration achieved? Is the ESR. Uh, that is the ESR reading. This is how the uh, ESR is measured in Metrox tube. But usually we, do, we don't do a ESR measurement in Metrox tube unless we don't have a Vestigis tube. If we don't have a Vestigis tube and we have to go for ESR, then we have to choose for a Metrox tube. But uh, uh, usually it's measured in, uh, you, you, this, is the, this is the tube which is usually used for the measurement of packet cell volume. So what are you going to do? We draw the blood from the anticubital vein, and the CDTA blood is transferred to the PCV tube. And this PCV in the PCV tube, uh, this is a centrifuge. We have to put the PCV tube in the centrifuge for 30 minutes in 3000 rpm. Then after 30 minutes, if you see, we get three layers. The PCV tube, uh, the Winthrop's tube, we, uh, is divided into I mean, three demarcations are seen. The bottom is the red cell mass that is also called the hematocrit. This forms almost 45% of the whole blood. And second layer is the buffy coat where the leukocytes and the platelets are present. And third layer, the upper layer is the plasma. So these are the three layers demarcated after the centrifugation of the 
blood in the PCB tube or the Winthrop's tube. First is the red cell mass of the hematocrit, which gives the actual red cell mass. Uh, and it denotes whether the patient is anemic or polycythemic. And second one is the Buffy coat. And third one is the plasma cell layer. And all the three have their own importance. All the three layers, they have their own importance. So this is the same here. This is the erythrocytes, which usually uh, compromise the 40% of the blood. And Buffy coat is usually less than 1%. And plasma is the contributes 55% of the total blood. These are the three layers which are demarcated in the PCV tube. Normal reference range of hematocrit is males 45 to 50% and females 35 to 40%. From the PCV, we can derive hemoglobin by dividing the PCV by 3. If we divide the PCV by 3, we get the hemoglobin concentration. Uh, so, if for example, if a male person is having 45% of PCV, then you have to divide by 3, then you get 15% as the uh, HB concentration. This is a rough estimation of hemoglobin concentration. If we don't have an access to do the hemoglobin, then you can go for a PCV and give a rough estimate of PCV uh, hemoglobin estimation. And this is the normal uh, PCV tube. Here you can see 45% is composed of the uh, uh, Red cell mass, one per, less than one person forms a puppy coat and next is the plasma cell layer. Whenever there is an anemia, the red cell concentration decreases and the plasma concentration rises. In polycythemia, the red cell concentration increases and the plasma component decreases. Normal list, 45% is comprised by the RBC, 55% is comprised by the plasma. Whereas there is a deviation whenever there is an anemia or polycythemia. So this is a pasture pipette by which we uh, we fill the blood into the PCV tube. We can't fill the blood by syringe. Usually, uh, it's uh, usually a pasture because the bore of the diameter is very uh, uh, the, the internal diameter is uh, very narrow. So a pasture pipette is used to fill the uh, vitrobes tube. And uh, uh, red cells denote the the hematocrit denotes whether the patient is anemic or uh, uh, polycythemic, whereas second layer, buffy coat. Buffy coat is important because it is the one which has the ma con maximum concentration of leukocytes and the platelets. Buffy coat smears can be done. We have to remove this uh, white, it's usually white in color and it's usually 1 mm uh, thick. If it's 1 mm thick, it implies 10,000 WBC are present. If it's 0 0.9, 9, uh, 0.9 into 1000, that is 9000 WBC are present. So in this buffy coat, uh, we have to remove the buffy coat and make a smear. What are the uses of a buffy coat smear? We go, as uh, 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 it's where uh, this is a qu qu quantitative buffy coat. So QBC is used for the QBC. You must have uh, heard about the QBC test. Here QBC or the quantitative buffy coat smears are used for the measurement uh, for the detection of hemoparasites like malaria, filaria, etc. And the second one is for the demonstration of uh, LE cell phenomena in conditions like SLE. Uh, SLE, as you know, it's an autoimmune disorder where there are self antibodies against the self antigens. Autoimmune disorder, so antibodies are directed against the self antigens. So in LE cell phenomena, what happens is when you make a buffy coat smear, uh, we, uh, we try to, firstly, we try to traumatize the blood and we put the traumatized blood into the PCV tube and then uh, we centrifuge it, we, we intubate it, centrifuge it and during this all this process antigen antibody reaction occurs. If there are really antibodies against the self antigens, antigen antibody reaction occurs and the homogeneous blue mass, basophilic mass is formed. And when you make this buffy coat smears, the neutrophils try to engulf this uh, homogeneous basophilic body and this is called the LE cells. These LE cells are the characteristic cells which are seen in autoimmune diseases like SLE. <coughs> so, for the demonstration of LE cell phenomena, we have to do buffy coat smears. Uh, nowadays, we are not following this because we are getting uh, more, uh, we are doing uh, AMA, EMA, anti-nuclear antibodies, EMAs. More, uh, we, have, we have become more advanced. This is an obsolete processor, but you should know this because LSL phenomenon can come as a two marks question for you.
and third one is for the detection of blasts in leukemias normally in leukemias we can see the blasts in peripheral smear but there are some leukemias like sub leukemic leukemia and a leukemic leukemia where the peripheral smear uh, we cannot see much of blasts to say the it has leukemia usually greater than 20% of the blasts has to be seen in the peripheral smear so 20% is the criteria for the blast count but whenever we can't see the blasts uh, um, uh, we can't see the accurate i mean uh, the criteria uh, um, the number of uh, the 20% of blasts in leukemias uh, then 20% uh, of blasts then you can go for a bapicot smear where you get the concentrated only the concentrated uh, leukocytes and you can check for the number of blasts in the bapicot smears so uh bapicot smears what are the uh, uses for the detection of hemoparasites like malaria filaria etc second one is for the demonstration of le cell phenomena for the demonstration of le cells as in sle rheumatoid arthritis jogren's syndrome etc third one is for the detection of blasts in sub leukemic leukemia and a leukemic leukemias these are the leukemias where there is decrease in the blast count in peripheral smear but we may get the accurate in uh, bapicot smears and next is the plasma cell layer usually it is straw colored in uh, straw colored but sometimes depending on the color we can diagnose to di uh, we can get to a conclusive diagnosis if it's dark yellow the plasma if it is dark yellow it may be due to jaundice if it's uh, red in color it may be due to hemolysis and the uh, third one is uh, whenever a plasma is white in color the patient may be suffering from hyperlipidemia so these are the <coughs> three conditions you have to remember when you come to plasma so what a wintrobes tube is a 11 cm long tube with one end closed and one end open and the calibrations are 0 to 11 wintrobes tube can also be uh, used for the estimation of esr as well as the pcd so we draw the blood and uh, fill the wintrobes tube and keep it in the centrifuge at a 3000 rpm for 30 minutes then we get the three layers one is the red cell mass second one is a buffy coat third one is a plasma red cell uh, based on the red cell we can categorize the patient whether the patient is anemic or polycythemic buffy coat is the uh, is the buffy coat uh, layer is uh, is a uh, is equal is equal to the number of leukocytes in the platelets and buffy coat smears can be used for the demonstration of hemoparasites for the demonstration of blasts in sub leukemic leukemia and a leukemic leukemia and for the uh, demonstration of le cell phenomena whereas the third layer plasma layer usually straw in straw color but whenever there is a change in the color from uh, yellow white and red yellow denotes jaundice white denotes hyperlipidemia and red denotes uh hemolysis there is hemolysis which is happening we can get to a conclusive i mean uh, we can uh, i mean this gives a hint towards some diagnosis thank you